how does this look at our hub and spoke system? Notice the miscreant on the right has the red desk. I'm going to paint the, his BD red too to signify that the BD might be a crook like his client, or maybe the BD is the crook. Maybe the BD is honest, uh, but the, it's a broker who turns a blind eye to his miscreant client because the client is, say, a big hedge fund that gives him millions of dollars a month in commission. So uh, he starts trading with grandma. The FTDs flow through the DTCC and bounce around within the DTCC. Uh, if, say, for every 100 legitimate shares, there's one FTD, the system's going to keep on working. It's not going to grind to a halt. But if we ever reach the point where for every 100 legitimate shares, there's 50 or 100 or 200 of these FTDs, it will become like sand in the economic, in the bearings of the economic engine. Now look at the effect on a company. I'll show you basic supply and demand curves. Imagine there's a stock with a certain amount of demand out there, a certain amount of supply, and the point where they meet is $40. The miscreant shows up and starts gaming the system. He sends out FTDs. Since the system sees these FTDs as normal stock, he's increasing the supply of stock, of a parent stock. And when you increase supply, you shift the supply curve to the right. He does it again, generating FTDs, shifting the supply line to the right as he goes. Eventually, he shifts the supply line far to the right. Now notice where the supply and demand lines cross. Of course, the price collapses. The $40 stock turns into a penny stock. Most investors think penny stocks are the Wild West. They stay away, so demand dries up. As demand dries up, a ceiling forms over the stock. The FTDs in the upper right started off life as stock IOUs and sincere stock IOUs, but IOUs just the same. Now that it's a penny stock, these FTDs become penny IOUs. Penny stock, penny IOUs. The fellow at the right has the money, the firm's a penny stock. A vicious cycle ensues where the company collapses. Other businesses stay uh, away from the firm. They say, gee, it's a penny stock. Is it going to be around? They stop doing business. Capital markets shun the firm. If you're a penny stock, you can't go into the world and raise capital. So as it loses customers and can't access the market, it can't recover. Society loses the products and technologies that were offered. And because the companies that come under these kinds of attacks are often software and small pharmaceutical companies and high-tech companies, uh, because it's possible to create the most confusion about them. So when the next Microsoft or Genentech is destroyed, society loses those technologies. Shareholder value is wiped out. Jobs are destroyed, not just those today, but those that the company would have created over its life cycle had it not been strangled in its crib. And ironically, the miscreant keeps his cash and often does not even pay taxes for an arcane reason I won't go into here, but he generally gets away without paying taxes. The possibility that this has been going on has been kind of an urban myth for the last 10 years, but can it really occur? That question was taken up by a Fordham University economist named John Finnerty. Uh, he wrote a highly mathematical paper asking, given the way our regulations work, could this really happen? He says naked short selling, one of those terms I explained earlier. He says naked short selling can routinely occur within the securities clearing system in the U.S. with potentially severe market impact. In fact, it seems to be pervasive. It's a particularly effective and damaging a method, and our system's actually conducive to this manipulative short selling. So his answer, can this really occur, is absolutely yes. Okay, can occur, but does it occur? That question was taken up by four economists from Wharton and the University of North Carolina. They wrote a cleverly titled paper, Failure is an Option. They discovered that in certain stocks, half the time this loophole is being used, it's being gamed strategically. Incidentally, the system has a a safeguard, a way to protect itself called a buy-in. Uh, these economists looked at two years of trading data and discovered in 69,000 uh, cases of FTDs that the safeguard kicked in only 86 times. That's 0.1%, which means that in the other 99.9%, .9 this safeguard did not kick in. So the answer is yes, this does really happen extensively. So now the question is, is it just happening randomly or is someone doing it deliberately? The SEC hired an economist named Leslie Bonney uh, from the University of New Mexico. She wrote 
strategic delivery failures in U.S. equity markets. She takes a statistical approach saying that if these failures are just random, you know, folks who can't find their stock in their desk drawers, you're going to see these failures scattered randomly throughout the system. Uh, in fact, the distribution of FTD shows that market makers, which is an activity of broker dealers, do strategically fail to deliver. Again, it's pervasive, and the distribution confirms that it's more likely to be a result of strategic failures than just inadvertent or random error. So you can't see the bad guys, you can't get their names, but they leave statistical footprints. And Dr. Bonnie found those footprints in the trading records. So now the trillion dollar question is, is it happening enough to break the system? The answer to that is there are people who know, and they're at the SEC and the DTCC. They're fighting tooth and nail to avoid releasing the data. Uh, of course, they're denying that it's happening enough to break the system, but they're the same folks who not long ago were saying it's not happening at all. Or if it's happening, it's not pervasive, or okay, if it's happening and it's pervasive, it's random. Okay, so now they're saying okay, it's happening, it's pervasive, it's not random, but it's not happening enough to break the system. You know, trust us, we're from the government, we're, we're here to help you. But beyond that, they won't actually give out the data. A quick historical comment. Our founding fathers understood that public officials shielded from observation often formed closed circles of corruption. They understood that the free press has a special role as the immune system of the body politic. And that sunshine is the great disinfectant. In their spirit, this country in 1996 passed an aggressive government sunshine law called Freedom of Information Act, FOIA. FOIA is remarkable and it shifts the burdens of proof away from the citizen and onto the government, which wishes to keep a secret. In 2005, a gentleman in the Midwest began pinging the SEC with FOIA requests regarding levels of fails and aggregate and by company. The SEC resisted, but FOIA makes it hard for them to do that forever. Eventually, they relented in July 2005, gave a partial answer. Before I show you their answer, I'll mention that I've asked Wall Street friends questions like, what percentage of trades fail, do you think? They give answers like 0.0001%. One said that in his 24 years, he'd never seen an FTD, that it just isn't really done. Highest estimate I heard was 0.01%. That's a hundredth of a percent. So it's about 2.5 million shares trade every day. Uh, these estimates translate into a few tens of thousands of shares. The high estimate would have been about 250,000 shares. Here's the FOIA response. Note first that the SEC didn't bend over backwards with commentary and explanatory notes. So it goes. Here are two of the pages. Please look at the upper left-hand corner. It says aggregate fails to deliver by date, NICE, that's the New York Stock Exchange, and NASDAQ securities only. So this is not OTC bulletin board pink sheet stuff. This is national market stock stuff. The dates are April 04 to April 05. The numbers are 150 million, 170, even 230 million on the right-hand column, lower side. So on June 22nd, note there were 159 failures to deliver, and the next day there were 169 million. So they were saying the cumulative went up 10 million. So maybe there were 15 new million fails and 5 million pass fails got cleaned up, or maybe there were 50 million new fails and 40 million got cleaned up. We don't know because the SEC gave a bare bones, minimally compliant response under FOIA. But judge not, lest you be judged. <laughs> I'm going to zoom in on a couple days. On April 17th, we went from a cumulative total of 153 to 230. That's an increase of almost 80 million shares. We had at least 80 million new fails to deliver that day. It could have been 90 million and they cleaned up 10. It could have been 120 and they cleaned up 40. But there was a net gain of 80 million FTDs. Uh, there were 2.6 billion trades that day on NICE and NASDAQ. So that's 80 million out of 2.6 billion. That's 3.2% of all shares traded that day failed. And the cumulative total that was left, 230 million, represented 8.8% of uh, that day's trading. That's outstanding. Now, let me mention that this does not reflect another pernicious effect discussed in Leslie Bonney's paper. She calculates that the average persistency of these fails is 56 days. So these aren't rolling on and off. They get on and they stand for nearly three months, three trading months on average. And averages can be misleading. 
a brook can be an average of three feet deep, but you still drown in it because it's two feet in most places and 10 feet in one place. Similarly, on average, one of these FTDs is on the list for 56 days, but there are stocks whose failures to deliver persist for hundreds of days or even years.